<laughs> Sorry, I feel crazy. Hi, my name is Jeremy O'Harris, and this is my Dazed A to Z. Okay, so for A, I'm gonna say Americana. I probably have, on average, five Americanos a day, um, which is, I think, probably unhealthy. I recently did four transatlantic flights. I flew from London to LA, then back to London within 24 hours. So I think that like um, at a certain point, my body was just existing as jet lag, and the only cure was a constant stream of iced and hot Americanos. D is for daddy, with quotes. Daddy is the name of my play, and daddy is a very, very important play to me. It's the first full-length three-act play I ever wrote, and it was a wild sort of year to premiere play because not only was I still in grad school, but I had just had this play that had been top 10 best plays of the year in every major publication. There was a lot of pressure on this play when it premiered in New York because people were like, well, this is Slave Plays Jeremy O'Hara. Like, what does he have to say next? And it was like, actually, this is what I had to say before. I've had a lot of people ask me like, you know, how does it feel to be in London doing Daddy first? And I have been saying that it feels like a it feels like a relief, right? That people are meeting my voice in the way that I first introduced myself. Like I introduced myself to the world with Daddy. I'm just so blessed that Daddy has continued to do the most amazing things in my life for me. Like I was not born with privilege. I was not born um, knowing who my dad actually was. But my daddy, the daddy I wrote got me into Yale School of Drama. The daddy I wrote got me my first agent. Daddy got me my first movie. Daddy got me to London. Daddy's gotten me more than any play should get one person. And for that, I'm so gracious and grateful. C is for Clace Bang. Clace Bang plays the epitomous daddy in this play. Not only is he a phenomenal actor, but he's also just like a classic sweetie pie. And like, he's the kind of like hot, straight, like jock bro, where he's like, he's the jock who like was in the school play and is like really nice to everybody. I mean, I hate to do this to him because he won't know what it means for the internet will, but he is kind of a golden retriever, you know? Oh, actually, no, he's a chocolate lab. E is for, Clace has a really good cologne that starts with an E. And this actually is a good place anecdote because he always smells so fucking good. And I was like, what? Why do you smell so good? Like, what's going on? And because he's um, a humble king and not a proprietary king, he sent me the name of Von Eiserdorf. That's what he, that's what he's for. <laughs> the only like scent I've ever had like a deep attraction to was Rihanna's scent. Like she actually has like this like encompassing smell. I met her for the first time in a chocolate shop. So it was like chocolate was everywhere around us, like the smell. And yet all I could smell when she walked through the door was her scent. Like it was like a thing in a cartoon where like someone has like a pink sort of like aroma come and it just grabs you. That's what it did to me. F is for Fenty, like Rihanna, Robin, Fenty. <laughs> Rihanna's a really important person to me because in pop music, like she modeled both the way I felt like an other and also the way I just wanted to have fun. And she was uh, effortlessly cool, effortlessly the best, and so effortlessly funny. Good luck booking that stage you speak of is still one of the best tweets of all time and no one will ever top it. B is for bastard. Um, Bastard is probably my favorite Tyler the Creator album. It's also how I should probably identify for the rest of my life um, because I am someone who doesn't know, know his own father. And it also is just such like a great retro word. Like, look at that bastard child there, you know? Daddy is this sort of semi autobiographical, auto vibey sort of drama about uh, a fatherless child. So I think bastard is a really good word for that. V. V is for Veronica. Um, and also Virginia. 
Virginia is where I'm from, and Veronica is who I'm from. Veronica is the name of my mom. She worked three jobs to make sure I could go to a private school where I had a good theater program. She had me quite young, and so she didn't know much about how to raise a young child, especially like a young, curious, queer child. But instead of using that sort of naivete um, as a sort of bludgeoning tool to force me into what she wanted, she actually just like listened to me a lot. Something my mom would always say is like, um, don't give a fuck about what anybody else has to say about you. You're the only one that matters, and I'm the only one that matters. Having a mom who gave me like a don't give a fuck what other people think attitude is part of the reason why I'm able to write the work I'm able to write, able to like exist the way I'm able to exist, and why I don't feel pressure to um, change who I am or who I'm going to be. K is for Kiyasha, which is my sister's name. My sister's very important to me. And in this play that I've written about a boy loving his mom, I constantly am reminded of the fact that I still haven't written a play for my sister yet. Well, I mean, I think the thing I'd most likely write about is um, the Christmas where we found out that her dad and my mom were getting a divorce. It was Christmas Eve and we were together and we could hear them arguing. We could tell that the end was kind of near. I decided to start telling her stories um, of, of Christmas stories about what we were gonna get for Christmas and where we were gonna go after that. And it ended up actually being like one of the most magical Christmases ever because we stayed up like until 6 a.m. and we're the first people to go downstairs for the gifts. And we were filled up, not with like their argument, but with like these stories we had come up together about what we were gonna do with everything we got. And basically everything we said we wanted to get for Christmas was down there when we got down there, which is sort of this weird magic out of a dark time. This is a promise that very soon I'm gonna write a play for you. The N-word. That's my N. It's very interesting because um, in America, there's been, you know, such a complex and deep history with this word. And it's been very interesting to like navigate being a writer who includes this like weighted word inside of my work in the UK. Recognizing that like the sort of pervasiveness of that word in America has made it very easy for it to be a part of my dramaturgy for so long. It's like, seeming lack of pervasiveness here. And I'm saying seeming because I'm not actually from here and I've only, am going on what people are telling me, um, has made the relationship to the word in my play much different. And so I, as a curious human, I've been very um, excited to recognize the sort of cultural differences that exist around this like really intense um, word in our, like in our shared history. S. S is for self, as in Shabalala self. Um, also the self that's, uh, you know, being protected and up upheld and exalted in this play because it's about an artist and a lot of artists deal with various levels of uh, solipsism and self-interest. And so I asked Shabalala self if she would graciously make the artwork for Franklin in the show, um, and she did. She makes the three large soft sculptures that we see in the third act of the play. And she thinks a lot about the black body, and she never makes, in my mind, complete self-portraits, but they are different selves that she could inhabit, I think. Something that I learned about myself in the process of working with Shabalala is just how much I adore being a collaborator to great artists. In this process, I have one of the best set designers in the country. I have one of the best uh, lighting designers. I have one of the best sound designers. And with Shabalala, I got to introduce to the theater world one of the best artists. The work that Shabalala made might mean that like my play and her work might live together in tandem for a very, very long time after both of us are dead. And that's sort of exciting. And I hope that this like inspires more people to do that kind of collaboration in the theater. T is for Tariq Jarrett. Tariq is our lovely lead. He is playing Franklin. He's sort of this weird version of me, uh, which is weird to say because I think it portends this sort of space where people are gonna project a lot onto the character. But 
You know what, I wrote this play seven years ago, like Project, maybe. Tariq Jarrett does it so, 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 so well. You have, like, when you see what he's doing on stage, it's gonna be sort of mind-blowing. Because not only does he have such wild vulnerability, but he's also, I think, decided to mimic me <laughs> in this way that um, has made all of my friends um, say that there's an uncanny similarity to some of our gesturings. So, yeah, I think I'll end there. Also, my cast is fucking dope, so come see daddy. <laughs> <laughs>